Hey everyone! Have you ever felt like your raw files, whether it's a landscape single shot, a sweeping panorama, or a complex panel with exposure bracketing, aren't reaching their full potential? Well, this video is for you. Today, we are diving into the game-changing adjustments in Adobe Camera Raw that will instantly elevate your images. And the best part, this is just the beginning. We'll start with the essentials in ACR and then take it to the next level with advanced editing in Photoshop. Stick around until the end to get a sneak peek at the exciting photography editing videos we have lined up next. Trust me, you won't want to miss what's coming. Ready? Let's get started. Jan, it's yours. Let's open Adobe Camaro ACR and load all the selected RAW files be it single shots, or bracketed exposures, or images intended for panorama stitching. The key point is that ACR is designed for editing RAW files, which are digital data that we must transform into photos. First, let's check the bottom bar and ensure we are working in 16-bit mode, not 8-bit. Here, if needed, switch to 16-bit. OK, done. In general, ACR offers many options for local adjustments, but our goal is to use ACR just for basic editing only. The final adjustments, whether it's for a single shot or a panorama, will be done in Photoshop. Think of ACR as the first step on the way to a perfectly edited photo. Let's go step by step. On the right hand side of the screen, here, you will see histogram at the top. If we toggle the clipping indicators, on off, on off, we can see overexposed highlights and crash shadows on the image. Here, okay, yes, overexposures. Okay, in the newer versions of ACR, you will find a profile section under the histogram here uh, where we can choose from several presets for landscape photography. The Adobe Landscape Profile, okay, here, is the best choice. While I'm not usually a fan of automatic edits, these presets work well and add a nice touch to our photos. Next, we have the Light Panel. Here we'll find sliders for exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. These sliders allow us to adjust each photo separately, whether you want increase or decrease exposure, okay, boost or reduce contrast, or fine tune the highlights or shadows. Personally, I try not to overuse these sliders. Pulling down highlights too much can cause unpleasant dark color fringes around the brightest areas, and pulling shadows up too much introduces noise and artifacts. That's why it's better to use exposure bracketing in the field so that we don't need to adjust much here. In the color panel, we adjust the white balance using the temperature slider, just like that, which shifts the image towards cooler or warmer tones. Warmer, cooler. It's simple, yeah. There is also the tint slider here, but I rarely use it. And uh, I don't use uh, the vibrance and saturation sliders either, as these adjustments are better handled in Photoshop using adjustment layers. In the effects panel, here, the user sliders are texture and especially clarity. Both enhance contrast on object edges, while texture can be pushed further to about I don't know, plus 25 to plus 30. Be cautious with clarity, never exceed plus 10. That's our maximum. Or you risk halos appearing on object edges. The day slider, just here, is interesting too. It removes or adds haze to the image. Okay. For panoramas, I recommend using the haze selectively in Photoshop rather than applying it globally in ACR. We'll cover how to do it in one of future videos. And I don't use vignette or grain at all. I skip the curve panel, saving those adjustments for Photoshop. 
I also know to use the color mixer panel since Photoshop offers amazing control over selective colors and masks. I don't use color grading either. The detail panel will come into play when editing night photography, but for uh, daytime shots it's not needed. The optics panel is more important. Here we can quickly and effectively remove chromatic aberration, those ugly color fringes along contrast edges, a common lens flaw, just simply here. We can also enable profile corrections here. Okay. ACR detects the lens used and applies corrections such as vignetting or distortion removal. These two corrections should always be enabled. We can see the difference right now. Okay. And that's it, friends. There is nothing more to do here. The ACR adjustments are simple and quick. Now we need to save our edits into a suitable graphic format. The beauty of RAW is that any changes we make don't affect the original file. The edits are saved in formats like TIFF, DNG or JPEG. So click the arrow at the top right here and a new window will open. Choose the format you want to save in. I recommend TIFF. OK, which is the ideal lossless graphic format. Then click Save. And finally, done. This will export both the files and the mini XMP files, which store information about the edits we made in ACR. If you have only been editing a single shot or a single shot with exposure bracketing, you can now open the photos in Photoshop. If you have been preparing the image for a panorama, the next step is stitching them together but more on that in the next videos. And that's all for today's tutorial. If you found this helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more tips on mastering landscape photography and editing. Thanks for watching and see you next time. By the way, have you heard that you can join us on our exclusive photography expeditions to Lofoten and Iceland? If you want to know more, check the link below.